Oh. Straight into a fish. Hello, good morning, and welcome back to the fish locker out on the boat. Right, we uh oh, it was a cold one this morning. It's first first frost, oh well, late autumn, early winter. And um yeah, I'm a little bit cold. <laughs> Right, we're hoping to do a bit of wrecking today. Um, I have, I was out at first light. It's about just after nine o'clock now. I've done a bit of steaming around to try and find some fresh mackerel for bait, and I couldn't find any. So luckily, I did bring some frozen. I always prefer fresh over frozen, but you can only do what you can do. I am out here now. I am, uh, I'm just sat right on top of a wreck actually, and all I'm doing is I am seeing which way the boat is going to drift. The uh, unfortunately when I got out here I don't know if you can see it, there is there is a pink commercial it's, it's a net boy so, uh, one of the commercial fishermen in the area has shot a net on this wreck um, yeah just is what it is in this um, this time of year especially on small tides they do net an awful lot of the wrecks so it's not uncommon to have to try six eight even ten wrecks in a day to try and find some that haven't got commercial fishing gear on them if this net hadn't have been here I would have anchored this wreck uh, I'm gonna have a go at drifting it if I lose my gear straight away into the wreck, into the net, then I'm going to have to move off and try and find another one. But all of the rigs that I'm going to be using today are going to be fish locker rigs. These are the rigs that I'm making in conjunction with Cox and Roll. And um, yeah, wrecking rigs, conga rigs, uh, leaders, and also locked in lead rigs, possibly. We'll just, we'll just see what we can do. Hopefully, we're going to find some big fish. That's the plan. <laughs> right, now I know which way I'm going to drift. I'm going to run round and I'm going to run through with a wrecking rig and I'm going to see if I can't pull a ling out. <laughs> it's a lot of line out. There's line out here that has never seen a light of day. to a fish. <laughs> Literally dropped straight into a fish. I've now got 80 meters. <laughs> 80 meters to bring it up. All I did there was I ran the first drift to see which way the boat was going to go. Then took the boat back up, up tide, dropped the wrecking rig down, and then instantly, as soon as it was on the bottom, it had a fish on it. Oh, yeah. That is a very nice link. <laughs> Just like that, first drop. I'd like to say it always happens like that. Right. There's the hook in its mouth. The second hook of the wrecking rig is actually Make sure this definitely didn't get away. Right. Fishing in this depth of water, fish often suffer with barotrauma. This here, this distension, its swim bladder inside of its body has blown, which has caused the air inside of it to expand and it's pushed its stomach out. Now I'm going to dispatch this fish properly, but he's already, he's a gunner. But yeah, there he is. First fish. 
first fish is a cracking link. That was it. Wrecking rig. Just like that. I'm actually I'm in a good position here. If I can get a couple more baits put on, I can drop straight back down again. Okay. All I'd done was fillet it off one of the frozen mackerel. Like I say fresh mackerel would be would be loads better th for this. There you go, it's ready to go back down. Ooh, am I gonna be able to make it? No I'm not. No I'm not, I've drifted off the wreck. But Steam back round and we'll have another go at that. <laughs> that worked really well. That's a fish. Straight into another one. Not a bad fish. Hang about, hang about. Whoa. Bottom hook of the wrecking rig, just in the corner of the mouth. Whoa, that was lucky. Just as the sun's come out. A lovely fish. Two drops, two fish. That last time around then, I pulled up a pouting. I did have a bigger fish on as well, but that come off near the bottom. So all I've done this time is I've filleted off the pouting into strips. And I've put a bit of pouting and a mackerel head on. I want to see what we can't pull out with that. Reason, like I said, that I like fresh bait over frozen, it's just because it's tougher, it's stronger, and it gives a better scent. That that last ling pulled my finger up. You do really need to you do really need to watch out for them because their gill rakers are incredibly sharp. Now all I'm doing is I'm going up tide of the wreck and drifting down onto it so that if this is the wreck here I'm going to position myself a little bit further up so I drop my bait down so as I'm drifting onto it my bait hits the bottom just on top of the wreck because that's where the fish live. <laughs> it is a long way down. And we're there. Yeah, Ling do give a really good bite, you know when you've got one on. Oh, there's the first inquiry. Yep. Feels like a small Ling. That one was taken on the pouting. Not a monster, but a nice size for a fillet. There we go. 
go. Yep. That's a proper one. <laughs> yeah, that's a proper one. Get this rod out of the way. There you go. Hear it growling. That is a fantastic solid link. And there's the hook. You need to be careful when you're picking them up because they have got lots of sharp teeth. They also have what's called gill rakers. I'm going to get this hook out with the tea bar so save me fingers. Just like that. That one there is a lovely fish. When I'm picking them up, I'm not putting my hands in the gills. If you can see, you slide your hand right up the inside of here so it doesn't go in between the gills. Because in between each line of gills, it's got what's called gill rakers. That's what lifted my finger up there. They're really, really sharp. I've got this guy dispatched off. Right, I'm going to try one more drift, one more drop. The reason being is, of course, I wasn't expecting to be this successful. I wasn't expecting to catch this many ling this quick. We have had five drops and I've had four ling. So we'll try this one and then <laughs> if we catch another fish, We'll move to a different wreck so I can anchor up and try and pull some eels out or something different Possibly like a spur dog or a top or or anything We might even find some rough ground and try and anchor up and just see if we can pick up some mixed species because I don't need to catch any more ling The ling that we've already got will feed me and the rest of my family for about two weeks <laughs> They are really nice eating fish ling I've, I've, we've got a couple of cooking videos on the channel already of, of ling. It's a real, real strong, meaty white fish. When I say strong, I don't mean strong tasting. I mean it holds, it holds together real well. It takes on flavours really well. Whereas like cod and pollock are flaky, ling is more of a meaty fish. Perfect for uh, curries, for making into fish cakes, for doing ever so many different ways. We've just had them as goujons. There's the bottom. There's the first bite. It's back. <laughs> oh, got it. Tell you what, playing weird that one. I think all it had done was get a bit old of it, and as soon as I struck it, swung up in the water because it felt like it wasn't there to start with. And as soon as I let a little bit of slack go again, it was. As I was saying with the ling, pollock are the same. Some fish suffer really badly with barotrauma, being that they don't handle with the um, the changing pressure, like when a diver gets the bend. The, the pink thing you can see sticking out of their mouth, it isn't their swim bladder. What has happened is their swim bladder, that contains a little tiny bit of air, down at the seabed under pressure, 
that air might only be that big. When you get up to the surface and it's atmospheric, it can be this big. And the fish can't expel the can't expel the air quick enough. Now you can with some fish you can play them up slowly. I mean this is this is relatively slow. If you hold them at a certain height, it allows them to expel some of the air. I've tried it with Ling and I've tried it with Pollock. I've caught them in 20 meters before and taken my time and they still blow. Some fish are just bad for it. Conger eels, you can... Conger eels and sharks, they don't have that problem. They'll go all the way to the surface and all the way back down again, no problem. Ling and pollock and pouting and whiting just don't handle it very well. I actually prefer this size for a fry just because the bigger fish, the really big ones, the old ones, generally they have quite a lot of worms inside of them. They have a lot of worms in their belly. Whereas these little ones, generally they don't. Well, that'll do us for the ling. Sort myself out. Get this guy dispatched and bled, and we'll go and find somewhere else. It's a bit of a strange, <laughs> it's a novelty, isn't it? That I'm leaving because I'm catching too many fish. There's no point to catch any more, it's just, just greedy. This is the wreck what I'm drifting over now. And you can see these are my first few drifts that I did. When I finished my drift, I loop around go up tide of the wreck and drift back down over it and you can see that I'm just coming over the wreck now there look and there's the wreck showing so my first drift was just to ascertain which direction I was going and then run round and drift it again just like that and there's the wreck you can see flat seat I'll try and zoom this in a little bit Look, that was when I steamed over it once, and this is where I'm coming up to it now. You see? So that is what the wreck looks like on the sounder. I don't really know what to do now. I've tried three more wrecks, and every single one of them had fishing gear on them. So I've come inside now, I've come back inshore, see if I can find some fresh mackerel and I was going to put the anchor down on some rough ground and I just can't find any. It's, uh, the wind has picked up, I mean it's not howling but we have, I don't know, 10 or 12 mile an hour westerlies and it is bitterly cold. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to head back in. I have got quite a lot of filleting to do. <laughs> yeah, an incredibly productive session, caught all my fish in like 25 minutes. Doesn't always happen like that though. I didn't even get a chance to get the anchor out. I, I guess I showed that wrecking rig work, if nothing else. <sighs> I'll tell you what, this time of year it's it's just it's cold fingers, long johns and chapped lips. Nice when the sun's out. Alright, what I'm gonna do is um I have got I have got some catch and cook videos already on the channel with Link and some filleting videos. I'm gonna fillet these off, portion them up. I'm going to freeze some down for us, I'm going to take some out of gyms and I'm going to share the rest out amongst the rest of the family. But there's enough fish, there's enough fish there to feed us for two weeks. Yeah, if I, um, a gentle steam back, if I find any fresh bait, if I find any more mackerel, I might, I might try and catch some of them and then put the anchor down. If not, when I get back and I edit this footage, if it's not enough to make into one single video, I might put it together with two different videos. Yeah. So we'll see. Either way, see you in a bit. This is the rig that I caught all the fish on. All of the fish of that trip was on this one rig. And you can see it's still in perfect working order. I mean, it has been chaffed up a little bit onto the mono here by the ling's teeth, but that happens, they've got strong teeth. This is why you use this type of mono. One of the reasons that I designed the rigs in this way was so that when it does sustain a little bit of damage like that because of rubbing up against a wreck, rubbing up against a rock, rubbing up against teeth, is, say for instance, if you dull your hook, 
you can just pop the hook off the loop like that get on a new hook a different sized hook bigger smaller whatever you're doing if you're if you're targeting smaller fish if you're not going for like the big ling and the big conger maybe move down to an eight or if you're going if you're only going big big fish wrecking 10 o's 12 o's even 14 o's because it's a loop all you do is you just pass the loop through the eye of the hook and then pass the hook through the loop just like that and the same way that if your muppet gets all chewed up all you do is just pop the hook off get a replacement muppet slide the muppet on now one of the things that can happen is quite often i've found that usually it's the bottom hook that gets most of the wear just because it rubs up more of this here rubs up against the bottom either way that if it's the top or the bottom if one of them becomes slightly more damaged than the other the rig isn't finished with all i'll do there is say for instance if i've sustained quite a bit of damage onto this one and that one's still fine is i'll just take my wire cutters i'll snip it off there at this knot and then i'll turn it into a one hook wrecking rig you can see all it is it's just half of one of those so if i get damage on the top one or the bottom one i'll just snip it off whichever way around it is tie a loop in the bottom and then i've got a one hook wrecking rig just exactly the same as that but half on the bottoms you'll notice that i usually just have a loop either a crimped loop or a tied loop if it's a tied loop it generally means that i've had to retie the rig i've had to cut some off what i'll do there is if i'm fishing like right in a really snaggy wreck some wrecks you'll fish into and they'll be fine you can drift straight through them and pull through and you won't snag up other ones it's just all bits of like snarled metal and scaffold and yeah in that case what i'll do is i'll take some lighter mono like 30 pound mono and i'll tie a rotten bottom link and then i'll put my lead on that so instead of being the 200 pound mono to my lead if your lead gets stuck in this snaggy wreck the 30 pound mono will snap so you'll get your rig and hopefully the fish back and all you'll lose is a lead so you can rig a rotten bottom setup to the bottom of these with just some lighter mono that is these are the wrecking rigs now they will come in a packet like this all you need to do is add bait and a weight i hope this video has shown you how effective these wrecking rigs are for pulling big fish out of wrecks it's as uh, yeah developed it over a couple of years and this i've found to be the best design and after it's taken a bit away you can always cut it down to being a one hook wrecking rig i hope this video has been interesting for you the very best of luck see you later that was it wrecking rig just like that